Hello and welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. In case you have any questions regarding this program, please write us at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Hello again. Welcome to the Stem Cell Healing Institute podcast. We are here with Dr. Sara Figueredo. She is the research and general director of the Institute. And we have a very interesting topic today. But first, hello, doctor. Hello, Louise. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Same here. Um, We are going to talk about kidney disease today and how the stem cells can help for this disease. Doctor, how do stem cells actually work to treat kidney disease? Yes, so um, and by, as I've spoken before in the past about uh, how stem cells work, we're, we're looking to regenerate uh, a tissue that has been damaged. So what we're looking to do in the case of the kidneys, it can be any component of the kidneys, wherever the blood flows and wherever we can get the stem cells directly to uh, the kidneys, we're looking to revitalize the cells that have been damaged from medication or uh, in many cases, diabetes, which is a a really big cause of renal disease and renal um, failure, as as well as a variety of different um, conditions that that can cause uh, kidney disease. So basically, when we apply the stem cells, we will put them into the blood um, as well as directly to the kidneys so that any sort of um, ischemia or any deficit of blood flow and nutrients and oxygen uh, that has occurred to the kidneys, which is usually the case um, where, where the kidney has actually, you know, parts of the kidney or certain cells of the kidney has, have actually died just like in a, in, a, in a heart attack, when blood flow doesn't get through a part of the heart, we get a partial death of, a, of, of, the, of the heart muscle. So the same thing happens in the kidneys where we just either don't get enough nutrients and, and oxygen or um, there has been some sort of damage due to chemicals or medications. And so by improving the angiogenesis or increasing blood flow, increasing regeneration of blood vessels to the kidneys, we get better function. And, and, you know, we've had questions about how do the stem cells know where to go or how do they, how do they work? So basically what happens is there are inflammatory cytokines that are released from a damaged cell. And that cytokine uh, or chemical messenger is specific for a specific tissue. So the body is really smart. So the the stem cells know from a a particular cytokine that, hey, this is where the damage is. This is where we need to go in and reconstruct and regenerate the tissue. So uh, it's it's quite phenomenal in in the way that it works. So, doctor, for patients that um, are suffering, (laughs) I say suffering because it's such a uh, painful and really bad procedure, can stem cells replace di- dialysis? Yes, yes. I'm glad you mentioned that because we have had patients that have reduced or even eliminated the need for dialysis, which is, uh, which is quite phenomenal. And for our, our listeners out there, dialysis is basically a way of um, removing the water-soluble toxins uh, from the blood uh, and, and basically, the dialysis is doing the job of the kidneys outside of the body. So, um, so any any toxins that have been uh, that are in the body because the kidneys can't do their work, and the kidneys work on water soluble toxins, whereas the liver works on fat soluble toxins. So, the dialysis works in detoxifying the blood from. Uh, of water soluble toxins. And so we have some patients that are on dialysis every day. Um, there are others that may need dialysis two or three times a week. And so these are the patients where we've made a really big difference where we've either removed uh, the need for dialysis or at least uh, diminished the need. 
So, doctor, can diabetes be a cause of kidney disease as well? Oh, yes, that is a, a very big uh, contributor to kidney disease, um, if not the biggest, because what happens is with diabetes, we have that um, sort of imbalance of um, blood sugar. And with that high, you know, sort of a chronic, uncontrolled diabetes, we have this chronic high blood sugar that, ca that causes glycation, uh, glycation products, which are proteins combined with sugars that um, cause a lot of damage to the organs, the blood vessels of an organ, to the eyes, to so many parts of our body. That's why we have so many diabetic, oh, the nerves, we have so many diabetic complications, and this is one of them. So because of those gly uh, glycation pro uh, end products, we get damage to the tissues themselves as well as uh, the blood vessels of the kidneys. And so that's where we, uh, uh, that's where we hone in on, uh, on the treatment uh, for kidney disease, uh, especially when it's caused by diabetes, because we also want to address the diabetes at the same time. It's really important that we don't only treat the symptoms, we have to treat the the root cause. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up because in our approach, uh, if, if there was a patient that had kidney disease secondary to diabetes, we would also want to look at the diabetes first and then uh, and treat both. Alcoholism uh, may also cause kidney disease. Yes. Is... So, so toxic, um, you know, toxins such as alcohol, drug use, even medication, certain medications, um, they can all... Uh, very much affect uh, affect the kidney function. I see. Okay, doctor. I don't know if I forgot to ask you anything about this uh, topic. Um, you know what? Why don't uh, I can explain a little bit about the treatment and what's involved. Um, what we do is, um, as I've mentioned before, our approach is, is very, very comprehensive in that We use adjunctive therapies like a total detox program with nutritional IVs and suppositories to get the body ready, along with oxygen therapy and um, uh, growth hormone therapy, age-appropriate growth hormone therapy, and stem cell enhancement formula or proprietary stem cell enhancement formula that contains key herbs and minerals. It's personalized for the patient. So all of these components work in conjunction Uh, with the actual stem cell uh, treatment. And we will combine all of this to get the best possible results in order to uh, create an environment in the body um, to keep the stem cells the happiest and doing their work for the longest that we can. And we, and we, we also, we don't leave out the emotional and psychological component uh, of healing. And so we will address that with some counseling and with some exercises Uh, which is so important because it's like with these patients that are on dialysis day in and day out, it's taxing. It is, if you speak with a patient with kidney disease that's on dialysis, it is so incredibly fatiguing and taxing. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, I know a, a few people that uh, suffer kidney disease and, and they are on dialysis now and it's, It's, it's terrible. They say those treatments are really, really painful will not be the word, but it's really um, upsetting for the whole body. Yes, yes. It is extremely taxing. It takes mm -hmm. a lot out of them. And, um, and so, yeah, so, you know, these people are, are so used to being ill all the time. And so the psychological, emotional um, aspect of healing is so, so important with these types of patients. Doctor, there are many studies in stem cells work, for sure. All you have to do is Google it, but there is like um, a bad image of the stem cells. Are these treatments safe, doctor? Oh, stem cell treatments are extremely safe, uh, depending on the type of stem cells that are being used. So if we were to use an embryonic or a fetal cell, which is a much more primitive cell, and it can um, literally grow out of control, cause tumors, perhaps cancers. Um, that is the, 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 that hasn't been refined yet. So we stay away from embryonic uh, or fetal cells and we use only adult mesenchymal stem cells, which are, uh, they're adults, they're not embryonic and they, they do die 
after a certain amount of time, after they've done their work of regenerating and they've regenerated themselves, they do die and it can last um, uh, up to a couple of years. And, um, and so that's the idea of an adult versus um, an embryonic cell. And we only use adult mesenchymal stem cells. So it's extremely safe. So doctor, did I ask you the right questions today? I don't know if you want to add something else. Uh, no, I think you, you, we hit everything. Uh, if any uh, prospective patients have questions and specific questions, they know how uh, they can reach us. Yeah. By the end of this podcast, you will find all the information, how to contact Dr. Fioredo. And uh, for everyone out there, I will, we will see you next week. You have a wonderful day, doctor. Thank you, Louise. You do as well. Okay, bye-bye. If you want to contact us at the Stem Cell Healing Institute or Dr. Sarah Figueredo, you may do it by calling us. In North America, you may dial plus one two zero nine six nine zero seven eight three six. Also, if you want to write us by WhatsApp, you may add plus five zero two four two two zero seven two nine seven. Please send us an email at info at stemcellhealinginstitute.com. And don't forget to visit our website, stemcellhealinginstitute.com. Also, if you like to recommend our treatments, you may find us on Facebook at Stem Cell Healing Institute. Please follow us on Instagram at Stem Cell HI. If you want to recommend this podcast, please refer to anchor.fm slash stem cell healing. Also, you may find us with that very same name on Spotify. If you want to watch our videos, please go to Dr. Sarah Figueredo, that is on YouTube. Thank you.